Hey viewers, this is Scott here. And today's lesson, I would like to go over one of the most infamous scripts in all of drumming. Uh, some say that it's not as common around now as it was back in the day. And it changed the way I play for the better. Of course, I use all other grips, like all the various types of matched, but I want to talk today about traditional grip. Now, I get asked a lot about traditional grip. How do I approach it? How do I hold it? Um, why do I use it? Uh, I use it for many different reasons, but it's not the only grip I use. So, I like to give you some insight about traditional grip, just in general, and how to go about learning it. A lot of people get really confused on how to hold it right, uh, when do the wrists get used, when, how does the fingers get used. So hopefully this video will give you a, a good start. So what I do first when teaching someone how to uh, learn traditional grip is I tell them to hold their left hand out or their right hand, depending on if they're lefty or righty, of course. Uh, but we're going to go with being a lefty. Uh, I mean a righty, I'm sorry. I tell them to hold them, their left hand out like they're shaking someone's hand. So now, you see here, we have the thumb and the index finger. We want to take the butt end of the stick and place it so that it gets right around here. You can go as far back or as far forward as you want, but I'd suggest you find somewhere in between because you want to be able to have the stick uh, at, a at a good balance point. If it's too far back, there's a little too much weight. If it's too far forward, you're not going to get any rebound off the pad or on the drum kit, of course. But once you get this, close the thumb. Uh, all I have to say is that you pretty much have uh, learned where all the con where most of the control of traditional grip comes from. But there's more to it. I'm not saying it's it's finished. There's a lot more to it. So now, it's positioned like this, as I said. Now, now you want to take your ring finger and your pinky and position it so that they're both resting, both resting underneath, like so. You want the stick to, aim, uh, to you want you want to aim the stick at uh, leaning around here, right around here. So that it's not too much on the nail on the bone down here, of course. And the reason for these two fingers positioned the way they are down here is because when we whip with this side, these fingers catch. So if I were to demonstrate first, just using the thumb, it looks something like this. See now, doing this, all I'm doing is rotating my wrist slightly and letting the thumb move. Once you get once you get that feeling, you can play around with it for a little bit at slow or a little quicker. And wherever you like to take it. Now, once you get that feeling uh, inside the, the, your fingers, now you want to try and get the ring finger and the pinky finger, like I said before, underneath the stick in that, what I like to call the sweet spot, right around there, if you could see. So now, from that point, you want to be able to rest the pointer finger, as you see, look. See that? It's going right in front of the thumb. And once it's there, you want to rest the thumb slightly on it. Don't squeeze, because you're going to choke the stick at that point. And the middle finger can either curve or stay straight up like so. I'm not flipping off anyone. <laughs> um, because that will help give extra uh, control on keeping the stick inside your hand. So as you can see, it's kind of positioned like so. And as you can see by doing this, just simply doing this in the air, my thumb is moving, and look at what the ring finger and the pinky are doing. They're catching and bouncing it back up. 
So if I was to take this motion and put it right on the pad, this is what my hand looks like. Observe closely. And all I'm doing is using slight thumb action and wrist movement. But inside all of that, you'll start to feel a little bit of that finger usage without you even trying too hard. And every time I bring the stick back up, I'm catching it very quickly so that it comes right back. But I'm not throwing my stick into the pad. I'm not throwing my stick into the drum or wherever I'm playing on. I'm just letting it bounce up. So now from there, you want to try practicing uh, different strokes and whatnot, different exercises with the right hand being matched, whether it be German or French, or with this traditional grip. This does take a little while. Uh, you'll start to probably feel a little pressure on the fingers that you're not used to because it's rubbing up against flesh. And of course, um, this position does seem a little awkward at first. One thing I suggest before I forget is you don't want to be too far out like this. You don't want to be too far in like this. A good place to start is let the elbow be slightly around here and the tip of the stick aim for the center this way. You kind of want to aim towards 2 o'clock this way so that it's always pointing that way and so that it matches your other hand like so. Like I said, this takes a little time to get used to. Or however you want to practice it. Like I said before, just to remind you, don't squeeze too much here. This is where most of the control, like I said at the beginning, comes from. And if you squeeze it too much, first off, you can really hurt yourself. If you squeeze it too much, you can feel the tension going up your arm here. And plus, the stick won't respond as good, and your sound overall won't be good. So, like I said, again, just to go over it one more time, take your hand out, take the stick, place it so that it's in between your index finger and your thumb, not too far back, not too far forward. Somewhere where you find it most comfortable. Because like I said, everyone's a little different and they may hold it slightly differently because everyone's hands are different, of course. And then you want to take the thumb, rest it, take the pointer, and take your ring and your pinky finger, rest it underneath around that spot. And the middle finger will just lie down naturally. Like I said, I'm not flipping anyone off. That's just how the grip looks. So, that's basically traditional grip in a nutshell. If you have any other questions or comments, or uh, there's something you're still unclear about, you could always leave me a message. You could always just comment. And if I'm missing anything, just tell me. I may make more lessons on this in the near future. But, now it's a matter of getting this under your belt like I keep saying over and over again. So, once you do get this under your belt, you can start playing different figures, whether it be uh, four notes in each hand being eighth notes or sixteenth notes. Or triplets. other grouping. There you go. And another thing before I forget, I'm sorry, I should have said this earlier. When you first get the motion of traditional grip going in the hand, in the uh, wrist and the fingers, 
you also want to be sure that you're using a little bit of arm. A little bit, if you want to get extra power. This helps, uh, this helps get the wrist a little more flexible. See this motion I'm making? You want to feel almost like a snake coming into attack. A nice whipping motion. And I'm slightly letting go of the stick. If you look really closely, I'm catching, I'm, uh, catching it as I hit the, as I hit straight in the middle. So I'm making this kind of motion. Almost like, uh, dribbling a ball. Almost, except, of course, this way. And as you can see, my elbow is doing kind of like a worm motion. And the same thing with match. And as you get quicker, less arm motion, more finger and wrist. There you have it. Traditional grip in somewhat of a nutshell. So I hope uh, this video gave you some good insight into traditional grip. And like I said before, if you have any questions, concerns, or any personal feedback you'd like to share, feel free to do so. Hope you enjoyed my first lesson on traditional grip. And uh, stay tuned. More lessons to come.